Hey, real quick before we hop into the video, I just want to say that I know it's been a ridiculously long time since I uploaded last. And to that, I just want to say, my bad. I was going through some things and then my computer I was using to play games and edit on with decided to die on me. Thankfully, I was able to snatch my mom's credit card while she wasn't looking and grab myself a brand new PC. So I'll be able to drop videos much more frequently now, maybe weekly or bi-weekly going forward. So drop a sub if you want to get those recommended in your feed, and let's get on with the video. In my time playing Kerbal Space Program, I've tried to do some ridiculous things, from playing without quick saves and quick loads, to creating an entire interplanetary Kerbal Stranding operation. But I want to do something more ambitious than that. I want to go interstellar with only a docking port. But this is no easy task, because I've never actually went interstellar before. Huh? And how does one fly a docking port? Huh? Hmm, good question. Well, for the uninitiated in KSP, there are several methods of propulsion that are a little, uh, unconventional. And these are commonly referred to as crack and dry. Instead of just using normal, lame, chemical rockets, lame. we need to become more creative with generating lift. Normally in KSP, a docking port is used to connect up two separate vessels into one larger vessel for the purposes of transferring crew, resources, or sometimes adding more stability but they have one very interesting property. Whenever two docking ports are close together, they'll begin to attract one another with a force similar to magnetism, but the game calls it docking acquire force. Now here, I've set up something to demonstrate how this works. So here's the idea, right? Whenever two docking ports are close to each other, they pull one another towards each other, right? So now here's the cool part about this. If we take one of these docking ports and we turn this down to zero, and we go to the other one and we crank this up to 200%, what that'll mean is this one won't pull towards this one, but this one will pull this way, right? So this entire craft, because this is stabilized and can't actually move forward, will go in this direction. Okay, so to help demonstrate my point here, I've kind of made this goofy looking car, but it serves a purpose, okay? There are six docking ports facing opposite each other that are sitting on a piston. The ones in the front have zero docking acquire force, the ones on the back are set to 200%. Okay. As this piston moves closer and these docking ports get closer together, at some point they'll catch on to each other and they will generate thrust. So that's pretty cool. We actually can use this to not just be horizontal, but also go vertically as well. But let me show you what I mean. So the design of this Kraken engine is based on a video I saw by a guy called Echo3. So please watch their video if you're uh, interested in knowing more. But here are the basics. We start off with an engine plate here on both sides. And then we grab ourselves a telescoping hydraulic cylinder and make sure that it can extend downwards. We put a docking port on this side. Now we're gonna do a little trick here to get 64 way symmetry. I'm gonna start right here with one cubic strut and then get my strut, eight other struts surrounding it. Then I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna give these eight. So eight times eight, 64. Now, if we go and get our docking port here, and by rotating it with a keyboard, we can have 64 docking ports. Okay. Now, we take these and move them all into the very center of the craft, like so, and then we can get rid of these afterwards. We don't really need them for anything. Okay, so here is our drive in its simplest form, right? If we take our hydraulic cylinder here and push it all the way down, we will eventually generate thrust. And just like that, we have a working drive. You want to find the farthest point that this extension can go to without actually docking because there's 64 ports down here. So if you dock this thing, you're never getting undocked again. The other thing that you want to do is find out the farthest away point uh, where, you, where you don't generate thrust. So you'll know where you can start and then where you can end without actually, you know, connecting. The best way you can find out where it stops is to cheat your craft into space. Say 1.30 to like... 1.97 so for me in the length of my craft this is the perfect distance okay now the very last thing that i want to do is i want to go to my action groups here find my main throttle and then take my hydraulic cylinder and set the target extension as my main throttle so now using shift and uh control i can actually like 
lower my piston down so I can just use this as an actual throttle. Okay, so with the complexities of Space Wizardry mastered, I have constructed the ship we will be using to go, Interstellar. It's a normal three-person capsule with several RTGs to give us power to where the sun doesn't shine. The Cabello system is far away. I mean, really far away. So just one of these engines isn't going to get us there fast enough. So the Interstellar Kraken Drive is equipped with two to get us there before the heat death of the universe. Now the eagle-eyed among you may have noticed a suspiciously engine-shaped portion in the middle right here. This is a less powerful 8-port drive that can allow us to make other smaller orbital corrections in space without using the full power of our ship at once. With all that out of the way, it's time to make our first ever journey to a different solar system and Kerbal Space Program and all without any rockets. After a smooth takeoff, I noticed that while this craft is really fast taking off the launch pad, it does have some trouble getting through the atmosphere. It slows down a little bit. But once you get past 50k meters or so, the acceleration on this thing becomes ridiculous. Just for comparison's sake, I set a similar chemical rocket and a Kraken drive in the same orbit around Kerbin to test their acceleration. The Kraken drive ended up getting from 745 meters per second to 3000 in just 22 seconds. And the chemical rocket took a minute before running out of gas just 30 meters per second short of gold. This only leads to one conclusion. Space magic drives are not only twice as fast, but also more fuel efficient. Somebody should tell NASA about this technology. Anyways, after getting into orbit around Kerbin, it was time to go interstellar. Normally in KSP, when I do transfers, I try to wait for a transfer window, and then just adjust my maneuver nodes until I get an encounter. But I noticed that interstellar transfers don't really work this way. The orbit line doesn't actually go all the way out to the distance of Cabello, so a new strategy was devised. I waited until I was on the other side of Kerbin, set Cabello as my target, pointed my ship towards my target, and then just started burning, or maybe docking in this case. <laughs> this blue line didn't seem like it was going to get an encounter, so I tried docking manually on the nav ball to move it closer, and that was incredibly helpful. Now, much closer to the target, all that was left was to keep the ship accelerating. And I had no idea how fast this should be, so I decided that 100,000 meters per second would be fast enough. Although in hindsight, this is not at all fast enough. Because the journey took about 400 years. Oh my goodness! I didn't think of this at the time, but if we divide 100,000 by the speed of light, we can find out that I was traveling at just 0.03% of light speed. To make this trip more reasonable, I recommend speeding it up a little, to make maybe like a million meters per second or something. I'm not really sure if the game can handle speeds like this, but I'm sure someone in the comments can let me know. Anyways, after our 280 year transfer, I was approaching the encounter with the Cabello system, and it was time to slow down. And I think while my ship is slowing down, I need to mention a couple of things that I forgot to say earlier. First of all, if you're planning on making this journey, I can't recommend Better Time Warp highly enough. Being able to put your ship in hyper warp mode and fly across the cosmos is almost necessary for this voyage unless you want to spend real life hours doing it. Secondly, for this docking port drive to work, you cannot have the KSP community fixes installed because this mod actually fixes our space magic propulsion system. So I had to slow all the way down from 100k meters to 15k just to get captured around the Cabela system. And after some orbital maneuvering and 120 more years of waiting, our immortal Kerbals came in for an encounter around Ariak A, one of the stars orbiting the black hole at the center of the system. And I think it's about time that I let you guys know what the real intent of this mission was. Our scientists back on Kerbin have long been theorizing what would happen if you fall into a black hole. Instead of just sending a probe to check it out without harming anyone, it was instead decided that we should send our top three pilots to check it out. So Jeb, Bill and Bob, knowing their fate, continue piloting the ship around star systems slowly but surely moving their way closer and closer to the black hole. But just before they make the final burn, I spotted a planet on a very low orbit around Cabello. And being reminded of the movie Interstellar, we had to do a flyby. And it was a water world just like the movie. But unfortunately, we were traveling in the opposite direction around the black hole. So instead of a cool landing, we got this cinematic shot instead. But now having surpassed all of the odds and being the first ever Kerbals to go interstellar with space magic, 
it was time to make the ultimate sacrifice and explore what is on the inside of a black hole. Jeb burned our periapsis deep inside the center and we began falling inside. As the crash fell past the accretion disk, time began passing differently. Days felt like minutes, and hours felt like weeks. After passing the event horizon, we were unable to see anything because we had passed the point at which light could even escape. The craft then began stretching and expanding until suddenly everything went ice cold. Wait, Jeb, do, do you hear that? Yo, wait a second, I, I remember these. Hold on a second, what game we playing? This game's awesome, dude. Black holes are the best. No way, let's do some story mode. We gather here to celebrate the life of Jeb, Bill, and Bob. We may not know where their mortal bodies lay or what they saw in the great beyond, but maybe, just maybe, one day they'll come back to us, enlightened with the knowledge of the future. They will be missed. Well, thanks for watching until the end of the video. I appreciate every single one of you. I'm sorry for being gone for so long. Uh, but if you like my video, please give me a like or give me a sub. It helps out the channel immensely. And goodbye.